Hello, this is Mark from My Keys to Music. Thanks for joining me on this video. What you just heard was a really neat keyboard sound from the group Rush. The name of the song is called Tom Sawyer, and that's the high keyboard part. Now this is part two of a two-part series. Part one features the first note of Tom Sawyer. Now obviously back in the day when Rush originally created this song, the Nord Stage 3 wasn't around, so we're using a modern-day Nord Stage 3 to imitate or mimic this sound. Now, if you want to read more about what Getty Lee used for different sounds, uh, there happens to be a post or maybe several posts here at the Vintage Synth Explorer website. That's www.vintagesynth.com. And people discuss the different synths used over the years by Getty Lee and the band. So have a look at that if you want. I'll put a link in the description. In addition to that post, there's another article here called Tutorial, How to Make Five Legendary Mini Moog Sounds, and it talks about the lead part here for Russia's Tom Sawyer. And you'll even see, if you read this article, it's just a little blurb here talking about how they used a detuned set of oscillators, or two oscillators, one slightly out of tune with some glide, and we're going to do all that and set that all up here on the Nord Stage 3. The Nord Stage 3 is a great keyboard. It's handmade in Sweden, and it's used all over the world by pro musicians and certainly amateur musicians as well. So if you own a Nord Stage 3 or thinking about buying one, this channel features the Nord line of keyboards uh, currently, and you might be interested in subscribing to check more of the videos out. Most of them are training-oriented or exploratory. In this case, it's called Discovery, and this is what we're doing. We're discovering the song Tom Sawyer, so with that in mind, the sound you're hearing on part two here was actually programmed by Mark Stallings. I programmed part one. He programmed part two, and he was gracious enough to um, lend his uh, efforts on this. He had already done it long ago, I guess. But So it's really fantastic here. In just a second, you're going to hear uh, how we do this and see how we do this on the Nord Stage 3. And if you follow step by step, you'll have the sound under your own fingertips if you want to use it in a cover band or just want to explore it and have some fun. With that in mind, if you're brand new to the Nord Stage 3 and you want to learn more about synthesis, feel free to stop by at www.mykeystomusic.com and you'll find both some free courses and some paid courses there uh, featuring the Nord Stage 3. So if you're brand new to the Nord Stage 3 or even if you're uh, not so brand new but want to learn more and want to learn everything from A to Z, I have training courses there for you to look at and consider. Thank you for that. So let's begin the lesson. So the lesson for part two is quite interesting. We have a sound that I thought would be fairly easy to imitate because, hey, it's just a lead part. Sounds like a saw wave to me. I mean, it doesn't have that major modulation happening like we had in part one. So I figured, oh, this, this is going to be pretty easy. Turns out I was having a hard time imitating this sound. And I came really close on my own. And I was going to, I was just about ready to record the video. And uh, Mark and I started talking, Mark Stallings, and we basically said, hey, I, Mark said, I already have this sound if you want it. I said, yeah, I'd love to have it and I'll feature it. Sure enough, um, Mark's sound was better than my own and I was a little bit disappointed in myself, but by the same token, I was also proud that I came very close to what he had. Let's listen to what he has here. And as we listen, we're going to hear something. We're going to hear it modulate over time, which was at first for me a little difficult to emulate. So let's listen to that now. you hear it change over time? I'll just hold this note here, this B. So it's not a static sound, if, and if you listen really closely to the recording, you'll catch that it does change over time, and that's what gives it a really unique personality trait for that sound. And at first, I was having a hard time emulating that, and I came really close. I ended up using a second oscillator and determining that shape might have something to do with it. So if you listen to shape oscillation, I'll just turn this off here and can hear that sort of gives it the effect but I think that uh, Mark was correct to use a different oscillator setup so here's Mark's sound on M24 I've duplicated that put it on M25 and called it Tom Sawyer new so this will be our playground let me just zero this out so that we can prove here that we're starting from scratch okay so I've cleared that out and what we have here is just a regular saw wave so let's introduce that second oscillator, but introduce the detune saw wave oscillator. And let's just listen to that together. Now I'll introduce it by adding this. 
and it truly is a detune, and you'll say to yourself, how in the world can this second oscillator be anything close to the sound that we're going for? The truth is that we're going to modulate it, but ever so slightly, even smaller than my hand can easily imitate. Listen to this. And that's even too abrupt. So we'll keep this oscillator control on zero. We'll introduce a tiny bit of LFO, and we'll make sure that the LFO rate is all the way down, and we'll make sure that we're using the triangle-type waveform uh, style for the LFO. And when I do that combination, this just LFO amount at 2.0, this oscillator control all the way to zero, and zero, even though it's zero, it means we want it to end up at zero, but this oscillator control is going to move it from zero just slightly higher back and forth. Listen to it now. There we go. Got really great modulation. Now I've got the rate correct. And it's just ever so slowly going in and out of tune between the oscillator. Or I should say in and out of tune when the detune oscillator kicks in. And that's how, that's really the exciting part of this effect. All right, now what's next? Let's save that first, Tom Sawyer New, and then let's go back to the original one. And uh, you might have heard this. We've got a mono happening over here in the voice, the glide, mono glide. So let's see what, uh, what that's doing. It's a glide rate of 1.3. So let's introduce that, mono glide rate 1.3. Listen to that. So that feels pretty good there. I'll save that. Now we can hear some release happening because uh, the, obviously the note doesn't stop that abruptly. So I'll guess something like that. All right, now let's go back to the original sound and see what the release looks like. The release is 368 milliseconds. It's on sustain and the attack is 34. So 34 and 368. Let's do that. 34 on the attack. Full sustain and 368 milliseconds. And save that. Okay, that sounds good. Let's see what other effects are happening here. Uh, we've got the LP12 filter, fine. And we have drive of two, fine and no keyboard tracking, and we do have that vibrato. We'll talk about that here in a second, and we'll do the effects first. So let's go back here. So we've got the drive on a two, the LP12 filter, fine. Okay, that's good. And let's see, do we have any frequency cutoff? Let's see, right here, we're at 21, so that's all the way. LFO mount, we have zero on the LFO mount. This, I assume, is zero, and resonance is zero. All right, so let's go put all of these. Resonance at zero, frequency all the way up, LFO all the way down, and this right in the center. Okay, save that. Okay, so do we have any modulation envelope happening on the original Tom Sawyer sound? Let's take a look. This probably won't matter because we're not using the modulation envelope for either of these, so it really doesn't matter what these are set to at this point. All right, save that. Uh, let's go look at what effects we have running here. So, for the original sound, we have a digital delay happening. So let's set that, find out what those are. The wet-dry setting is a 1.5. The feedback is a zero. It's an analog mode in ping pong. And the rate is a 341. So 341, zero, 1.5. So I'll set mine to that. 341, zero, and a 1.5. Make sure it's on analog mode and ping pong. Okay, that's the delay settings. Let's see what the EQ looks like. Okay, we don't have any drive because I don't see the light on. Let's take a look at the treble. Okay, the treble is 2.2, the mid is 2.0, and the bass is 5.8. Save that. Let's go look at the mid frequency, 5.6. All right, let's take a look at the reverb. Bright, all one, amount 
Safe. All right, let's see what else is going on here. Okay, now, the fun part, the vibrato. Notice how we have the vibrato set simply to the wheel. So just highlight that until you get those two lights at the top, and that will be the wheel setting. That means when I move the wheel up and forward, we'll have some vibrato. Let's listen to that. Now, there's one other thing that you need to know about the vibrato, is that the settings for the vibrato are under the sound menu. So let's go into the sound menu, and you'll see on page three, if you go one, two, three, you'll see that there's a rate, and I've set mine to 5.7, and I've set the amount to 38 cent. This will give you the right rate and the right amount. So let me give you an example. If I have 5.7 and I invoke the vibrato, and you can speed it up here, or slow it down. So 5.7 feels about right to the recording. And the amount is 39 cents. It's almost not as important here with the 39 cent because the wheel is gonna dictate whether it's gonna be zero or let's say 50% or 50 cent. Okay, now the final part that we didn't cover in part one and we haven't covered up till now is the fact that the sounds are split. So on panel A on my Tom Sawyer sound, I have this. And then on panel B, I have this. So you wanna make sure you split the keyboard. Okay, and I'm just doing a mid split here on C4. So hold this, go to C4, and you'll split the keyboard right here in the middle. And then push A and B together and that should let you have both sounds playing at the same time so you can perform it like I did at the beginning of the video. And of course, don't forget the end and the vibrato and you're good to go. Thanks so much for watching. Stay tuned for more.